Hey guys, welcome back. It's Mark and Tanya, and today we're going to show you how we went from this to this. So we are getting our 80-20 right now. We're picking it up. And um, we are also picking up our solar panels. So, yes, just trying to make sure everything is secure in the van so it doesn't slide around and there's no damage to any of the products. So this is really exciting. <laughs> uh, this is the cross bar kit. Yeah, so this is cross bar kits and they just have 80-20 famous uh, Nuts and bolts there. So they are in there right now cutting the 8020 for us. And we realized that when we did the Frizz Air fan, um, it was right at pollen season. <laughs> so we're going to have to redo all this because uh, it is completely coated in pollen. So uh, another project, but we can do it. <laughs> Hey guys, so we're about to get started. Actually, Tanya is going to do the install on the roof. I'm just going to sit here in the van and drink coffee and tell you how these things work, as usual. So, uh, we're proudly sporting our Anaka Gear shirts. They did not um, endorse us. They didn't sponsor us in any way. To be honest, they didn't even ask us to wear the shirts. We just liked them. Uh, but we were so impressed with their products. We were so impressed with their customer service and their people that really we really wanted to give them a shout out. So what we're going to do first is we're going to install the Unaka Gear ProMaster van adapter. So this is a two-piece set. There's actually a third piece if you're going to mount 8020 to it, but we're going to leave that off for now. So these pieces are anodized aluminum, and the aluminum has, I think it's got magnesium and silicon in it, so it's really strong and really corrosion resistant. Um, the part that slips on top actually has rubber feet, so this is the only thing that touches the roof of your van. And they've even gone so far as to make sure that it's not going to scratch. They put these rubberized feet on the bottom of it. And even the hardware that you're going to attach it with is stainless steel. So everything is completely corrosion proof. And the way this sits, there's no way for water to gather up in it. Um, so it's a really, really well thought out product. The only additional thing is this roof adapter. So if you're going to use 8020, this would go ahead and sit on top of here. It slides into the channel and everything is held together by those two screws. And Tanya is going to show you how you do it. So now it's time to assemble. We're going to take this bracket and it fits over the T-stud. The other bracket, the one with the rubber, goes on top or it slides, you can put either way. And then here is like an L bracket with the two stainless steel screws, goes right here. And I am just going to hand tighten them. There you go. So now we are going to install, we have the 8020 up here, cardboard on either, on either ends just so that it doesn't scratch the skin of the van. And these are T-nuts. So each bracket takes two of these. And if you'll notice, on one side it is flat where the opening is. And on the other side, it kind of has like this raised part. The raised part needs to be on the inside of the bracket. These have to be slid in, two for each one. So that means we'll have two, four, six, eight of these uh, T-nuts. So again, flat side goes facing the outside of the skin. So that is for one bracket, and we'll slide those down, and let's do the other again. The opening for the bolt goes on the outside, and remember it needs to be flush. The raised part goes towards the inside of the 8020, and then we'll scoot these down. So these two go for this bracket, and we'll slide these two down here. The 
this bracket. Let's go to the other end of the 80-20 and put the other four T-nuts in. Next is a washer and a stainless steel bolt. Goes through the L bracket to the T-nut. <laughs> it's definitely, definitely easier. <laughs> Looks easy. I just gotta have to feel around. Oh, I think I got it. I got it. I got it. Maybe not. <laughs> Mark. So here's what we learned last night. These T-nuts, it's actually pretty easy to thread a bolt into that hole when you're holding both of them in your hand. However, when you feed it into the 80-20 channel, it kind of sits below that lip right there and it's really hard to figure out how to get a, a screw, I mean a bolt into that. You're really fumbling around with it and it's not very easy. So the problem is we've got one, two, three, four. We've got like 17,000 of these things to put in. So this way is not going to work. So what we did last night was we built kind of the back assembly. We just put this together on the ground when we were watching television. But we also realized we can't slide this into the, into the long rails because of the Max Air fan. So what we're going to do is we're going to take... That those two long rails down from the van. We're going to lay them out in the driveway and we're going to build the whole roof assembly here and then we'll lift it up with the help of some of our awesome neighbors onto the roof of the van and then we'll just have to attach it at the four points on each side of the van. So attaching 16 of those T-nuts is going to be a lot easier than attaching um, the big bulk of them that are on the assembly. So next step, take this down, put them here, start building the assembly here and then we'll go from there. So this comes obviously with a lot of components. Um, because we've never done this before, we tried start we tried um, doing it, attaching it to the roof, and then we thought last night, no, we'll do the main part and then put it up. But again, with all of this, it's just trial and error. It's very tedious, so remember to have patience when you're doing this, and um, to love one another. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so we're attaching it here on the driveway and then we're going to lift it up and try and mount the whole frame on top of the roof. So again, just very tedious, a lot of parts to it. Just be patient. Alright, so Mark and I are done for the day. Thank you so much for awesome neighbors uh, to borrow some tools and ladders and some muscles. But uh, we have got the frame up on the roof right now. It is not screwed in yet. We do have some more work to do. But for now, we're done and at least it's up. But we won't be driving the van. So until next time, see ya. So you may have noticed this recurring theme in our videos. It goes like this. We start the project, we're excited about the project, we get it about two-thirds done, and then suddenly we're back to the beginning again. So that's where we are now with this. We had all the 8020 up here, we had it all assembled and up here, and we couldn't fit it between these um, these adapter brackets. So trying to figure out why, I tried to move it, tried to squeeze it, nothing was working. And we came to realize that this, this T-stud is closer to, it's a, uh, the, the, the T-stud across the, across the other side of the van. These two are closer to each other by about an eighth of an inch closer than the rest of them. I don't know why, maybe we just got lucky. So we had to make some changes. So I remember my old Italian father if something like this happened, out came the file, plane, the axe, whatever. That is gonna fit.
So we've made some holes. Aluminum's pretty soft, so I've extended this so that we can actually push it back a little bit further. Now we're going to try to reassemble it, and I will probably keep this piece loose, um, assemble the 80-20 rails, and then tighten this, torque this down once it's already in there until this starts to flex, and I'll just stop there. So this won't be as torqued down as the rest of them, but it should still hold. I still have Loctite in there and everything, but yeah, this is the stuff that happens. I don't know why, but happens to us a lot. So thanks for putting up with it. Let's get to work. While Mark is busy doing work, taking work calls, I am going to help him out with the solar panels. I have already assembled the flush mount brackets that we are going to put onto the uh, solar panels. So here we go. Oh, and if I call everything a bracket, it's just because that's what I call it. Mark will edit it and let you know exactly what it is. <laughs> So we're going to take the flush mount bracket and make sure that it's flush with the solar panel frame and line it up. Mark was so nice, he circled all the ones that I needed to put the brackets on. So you take the nut and the washer, and this is where it gets a little tricky. And we have to line them up. <laughs> I also have thread locker. Take the other steel bolt, put a little bit of that on there. Oh, I need my washer. So washer goes on there on the bolt. And then we're gonna screw it in by hand like that. Okay. Perfect. And we're going to hold it up underneath. And now we're going to tighten this. Okay. Again, making sure that this flush mount bracket is flush to the solar panel frame. And it's looking good, nice and tight. So let's move on to the next one. So I thought I'd give you a little update on where we're at. So we ended up screwing and unscrewing the roof rack so many times we eventually stopped filming because it would have been pretty boring to watch. At this point, it's pretty much assembled. Um, all the pieces are pretty loose still though. We haven't really tightened anything down. The problem is we're having a lot of trouble fitting these bars between the between these adapters because the space between this adapter and the one across the way is pretty inconsistent. So um, and we have tried pulling these apart and shimmying them back a little bit, trying to gain a quarter inch here or, or an eighth of an inch here, an eighth of an inch there. But it's we managed to get it in, but it was not very easy at all. But that's probably because of something screwy with our van. Uh, the Anaka guys have called several times to try to help us. So um, really, really awesome guys to deal with. They've been extremely helpful, but we managed, managed to get, at least get everything in to this point. Now there's a couple things you are going to need because most of this is pretty consistent. You're gonna need a torque wrench. You are going to need some 242 Loctite. You'll use a lot of this. You'll probably need two of these and you're going to need a bunch of these adapters so most of the bolts that come with this are 3 16 hex so you're going to need an end i had to kind of put multiple pieces together because my torque wrench is has a quarter inch the um this i believe is a 5 8 inch opening to the 
uh, 3 16 Allen wrench so I kind of had to marry a couple of these pieces together and eventually they fit in mm. here the way a torque wrench basically works is you decide how, what kind of torque you want you dial it in here and then it gives you kind of a visual and audio you, you can get a feel for when you've you've hit that torque so these bolts get tightened to 156 inch pounds the hex bolts on the adapters go to I think it's one 135 or 140 I was talking to the Inaka guys yesterday they said that would be fine so uh, that's pretty much what we've been shooting for and then before you tighten it in you put some of this Loctite to hold the threads in place so this is where we are we are now going to lift up one of the solar panels and start to fit it in because we want to kind of lock these pieces in place then we're going to still we still have to drill our gland for our solar panel wires but wanted to bring you guys up to speed um, you just need a lot of patience to do this you need a lot of hands if you had like 12 hands you'd probably be better off but either way it's good and 8020 is super solid we had talked about originally going with unistrut because we knew it was the nice thing about unistrut is it's in the electrical aisle of every home depot in the country unis uh 8020 we had specially we were going to have to specially order until we found it at unaka which is just two hours from here so we went and picked it up they cut it for us so it was really 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 nice um okay so let's get to the solar panels Mark, what you doing now? So, we've got the rack up here. We've got one solar panel in place. The problem is we can't adjust any of the rails because as soon as we start to move something, it's so tight in the middle that it just shifts the whole rack. So we're gonna start tightening down the rack at at least the corner points and then get everything adjusted and then we'll tighten everything down completely. So right now it's just getting all the, all the uh, corner bolts in place. And that's what happens when they're not. Remember that Star Trek movie, The Undiscovered Country? This is what the, the Klingons bled this like stuff. I think that's what it was. Klingon blood was was Loctite. Interesting. Yep. I'm getting a hunger headache. I have to go potty. Oh. And then there's that. <laughs> How does this one fit so fine? Because you're over there oh. working on it. Taking what they gave and goes, I'm working for a live. I'll get a YouTube like, I'll get some kind of YouTube copyright infringement for singing Huey Lewis in the news. 90% of the people watching this are like, who's Huey Lewis in the news? It's like old people music. <laughs> okay. I really have to go. Okay. And I, I need a ladder. <laughs> There's a ladder right there. The good ladder. Oh. Okay. See you guys. Good night. Well, that's as much as I'm doing today. Pretty much done with the actual 80 20 pieces there there were spots where it was so cinched um, that this channel was starting to close and we had a hard time getting the screw into it the bolt into it but we got it 
Um, one solar panel is in, I've run the wires. The other solar panel is going to fit in this opening. We'll probably put the entry gland somewhere right around here. We'll do that tomorrow and then we'll be done. There's also a spot there that right here next to the fan where, see here it's nice and, here the, uh, it stays kind of upright, but there the, the 80-20 sort of sags. I'm not sure why. So we're going to maybe take that little piece apart and, and figure it out tomorrow. But other than that, we are done. Lots of screws, lots of patience, lots of frustration, but pretty happy with the way it came out. So we will be back here tomorrow to finish the job. We will see you then. The roof rack is done. Yes. <laughs> so the 8020 is actually all in place. It's all locked down. The solar panels, we've got the front one locked down. This one is still loose because we've got to pull it and run the wires through the roof of the van and to our solar charge controller inside. Other than that, we have the roof deck to still do and Tanya is going to put in the wind fairing by herself. What do you think? Nice. And she can do it. So. A shout out to Unaka Gear for all of their help. Mark and I ran into a couple um, pickups along the way, but they were right there. Their customer service is great. They answered yeah. our questions and... Yeah. They were actually willing to get on the phone with us <laughs> and FaceTime while we were putting this together to take time out of their day. So really appreciate all the help they get. And we're waiting for the mail carrier to come by because I think there's a couple of T-nuts that we've either misplaced or they're buried in this 8020 somewhere or we lost it somewhere, but they were kind enough to just send us new ones. So again, guys from Anaka Gear, you're awesome. We appreciate yes. you. Thank you guys so much for following along on this video. Please don't forget to hit the like and the subscribe button so you can be notified when we have another video that's come out. And thank you to all of our viewers for your comments. They're very well appreciated. We, we, we read through all of them mm -hmm. and they help so much. So keep them coming. Thank you so much. Until then, have a great weekend. We'll see you next time. See ya. Bye. Negative.